Hello and welcome back everyone, I'm Diglo Buffalo and this is Let's Play Deus Ex Human Revolution, Director's Cut. When we last left off, we were here in the police armory and we were thinking about breaking into it to grab all the stuff and sell it off. But you know what, I decided against it for now. Not in general, but just not at this moment because that stuff's not going anywhere. So let's just uh, stay on track for now. Do what we have to do, and uh, worry about... We can always come back for that. So, let's spend Praxis points when we need them. Not... Because for now, we only have a few of them, so... Let's be a little bit more careful with what we do. So, let's head on over here. There's nothing here, no. Oh, and now we can also pick up photocopiers and throw them at people. Oh, I see a guy. Oh. Just walking by? He's practically begging us to knock him out. Night, night. So, well, doesn't have anything in his pocket. And here's a vent shaft. So, we'll just drop him off in there. Come on. Don't get all hung up. Get it? <laughs> oh, this is... Uh, this is... looks painful and very undignified. Okay, there's a camera over there. Oh, there's another guy. Oh, let's check out the other side first. Detective offices both ways. Oh. Oh, there's an open door, but... Oh, wow. That must be like a meeting room. There's like four of them in there? Uh, yeah, one, two... There's one sitting down there. And... There's another guy. Yeah, four of them. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere near that. So... There is a vent shaft there, but what good is that? We can't take out four people. Again, unless maybe we had a gas grenade. But we don't. So... The... The question doesn't even come up. So let's see where this takes. Okay. I presume... No, this doesn't take us anywhere. I thought that would maybe take us to that meeting room, but no, it doesn't. Got an office here with a guy inside it, but he's very helpfully turned away, so. We put him to sleep. And now we can take a look around. He's got some money. He's got a gun. Nothing in here. Oh, stop worm. 10 millimeter pistol ammo. Nothing over here. Bunch of wanted posters. And the computer's unlocked. So let's get the mails. Head back in here. And now we can read them in peace. So, regarding Robert, from Monique Rubens, to Detective Frank McCain. Hello, Mr. McCann. McCann, not McCain. 
Hello, Mr. McCann. My sister told me that you stopped by our house last Thursday and wanted information about my husband, Robert. To answer your question, yes, Robert was augmented. He had an accident in the machine shop where he works about two years ago and they had to replace his arm. Turns out he actually gained in productivity after that. You think this has something to do with what happened to him? I'm glad someone is finally working on the case. Thank you, Monique. Frank Mc... No. Robert Rubens. I don't think we came across him. Good morning, Detec Detective McCann. I have to inform you that uh, effective immediately, you have a new assignment. This is a top priority. That's why we've chosen you. Uh, you are, after all, one of the oldest investigators on the payroll, a veteran. And we need that experience on this case. We've had reports of multiple disappearances recently. Abductions, murders, not clear. The majority seem to be women, but in a few cases augmented men have been disappearing. People in the area are getting scared about this, and when uh, people in Detroit get scared, you know something's fucked up. I'll have the files de delivered to you sometime today, Lieutenant Joan Ashbrook. More Glock down. Sergeant Melanie Frizzell. 2 Debt 87 All. Attention all personnel. The John Doe in the morgue is classified as ultraviolet under RHS 2012. You all know the drill. Everyone with blue clearance or lower stay out of the basement. You'll be told when it's okay to move freely again. Thank you for your attention. So the morgue is in the basement. So, good night, Detective McCann. I'm moving on. This appears to be empty. Wow! This guy's rolling in it. Well, guy walking by, but we can't take him out as long as a camera. Or we have to time it right. So, let's hack this while he's over on the other side. Wow. But I think this just looks complicated. Because... Whoa. I don't think we have access to all those spokes. Yep. Access granted. Okay. And I saw some uh, some mission progress, so I think this is Wagner's office that we had to get into. Okay, outside is gone, so but there's nothing of use here. So Okay, here we are. We got a problem from Blaine in the brain. D Detective Chet Wagner. Fuck you, man. Fuck you. You wrote, are you fucking... Yeah. What? Uh, do you also want me to come and paint a giant fucking billboard? Wait. On my lawn that says I associate with drug dealers? They could be, scre they could be screening my inbox. You dumb fuck. Never, ever leave written evidence, stupid fucking bastard. Anyway, grow some fucking balls, Lopez. I do I have to do everything? Yo, man. We got a motherfucking problem, bro. Some of them cats we stomped near the turf in City A are still coming around. I thought we had a deal, man. I let you in on the profit. But you have to keep them fucks out of my way so I can make the extra cheese dealing the stuff in the first place. <laughs> yeah. So he wrote him on his work email. That's smart. Alright, Captain Ryan Penn, HS Training. Hello all, Homeland Security is finally, finally ready to start its training courses. So next week, every officer is going to have a one-on-one -on -one interview with Joseph Manderley, the go-between. Each of you will be shortly, uh, each of you will be told shortly when you meet a scheduled. These courses are mandatory. Thank you, Captain Penn. Thank you. From 011452. 
Just a quick message to thank you for your help in the Serif Industries investigation. You helped us handle a delicate situation. We won't forget this. Then insight from Detective Fred Moyes to Chet Wagner. Hello, Detective Wagner. I'm a colleague from the 76th Precinct, and it has come to my attention that you were one of the investigators on the Serif Industries attack a couple months ago. I'm currently assigned to the Serif Manufacturing Plant case, I'm sure you are aware of the recent attack. I'd really like to meet with you and get your input on your investigation. See if we can cross-reference ev cross -reference evidence interviews. I'll be looking to receive word from you cordially, Detective Fred Moyes. So was that mail from the drug dealer or whatever he was uh, the reason why he got demoted? And here's another... Another office. I'd like to take out that guy walking back and forth. Out to oh, automatic hacking tool. Yes, please. Some money. Smooth this. Machine pistol ammo. He is coming our way. I don't see the camera on our radar. Well, and he turned around right here. Well, maybe once he starts moving down again. No. Oh. Well, that worked too. Let's move him away from the window, maybe. Here, have a nice nap. Okay. So we looked in the drawer, so... Computer. It's a level one, so we don't want to use the auto-hack. Oh, seems fairly simple. Access grant. And another nuke virus. All right. So. You whoring now? Hank the Tank. Detective Jenny Alexander. Hey, Jenny. I was walking around Grand River Road last Friday, and I'm pretty sure I saw you on the corner there, dressed as a lady of the night. What's up with that? You dropped the badge? Hope you kept the cuffs, though. Anyway, hit me back, we'll have lunch sometime. P.S. I assume you were working undercover. If not, please disregard the invitation. What, if she changed careers, you don't want to have lunch with her anymore? That kind of sucks. The Ballers, from Munchies, to Detective Jenny Alexander. Sup, officer. I have some info you might want on your little DRB friends. I saw them stash some of the gats in a storage unit in the row. There's a top cat, DRB lieutenant. One bad motherfucker with a shotgun. He got the code to that storage on one of them pocket bitches. One other thing, if you guys plan to raid the crib, you should be careful in the maintenance corridor between D-Row and a spot near the Chiron building. They put some soldiers there. Now that's two tips. Two. So I want twice my usual CI rate. If you fuck me over on this, you can forget me my help in the future. Munchies. So I think this is referring to the same stuff we got. Because we saw an email that she sent to, to the captain 
about a weapons cache. So, third floor offices from Adrian Varga Vergos uh, to Christopher Trot. Hey, Sergeant Frizzell wanted to make sure I give you the codes to all the third floor offices for your round. And there's the codes. So, I think we now have the codes for all the doors, but we don't want those. Actually, what we should be doing is going through that corridor and hacking all the doors. Why? Because we can. Alright. Let's wait for this camera. To not be looking our way. Oh, this is going to be somewhat difficult. Uh, let's first head in here and see where this takes us. There's an office here. There's a box here. Hold on. Oh, that takes us just back out into the hallway. So, not necessarily where we want to be. It's this movie from the 1980s. About this cop. He gets all shut up. He gets rebuilt as a cyborg. Uh, is that with Van Damme? No, that's something else. I'm surprised you never heard of it. it takes place in the future of Detroit. I guess I'm just not into sci-fi. We're talking about RoboCop. The original RoboCop, not the remake. I haven't seen the remake, but I heard it's not very good. The original is pretty good. Hmm. I don't think there's any way of taking these guys out. Nope. But it doesn't really seem like there's a whole lot in that office anyway. They certainly didn't notice that their colleague isn't patrolling anymore. No, yeah, this one's open. This one's locked, but maybe the camera won't see us down here. No, 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 no. It did see us. So yeah, you can't use your position while crouching and hiding as an... as an indicator of whether the camera will see or not. Because that camera will see us. There's this, but, you know... Hold on, actually, I want to... I do want to get down to the end of that corridor. So. Let's wait for this. To move away again. Move down here. This is where the two guys are, right? Yep. This door's open. And I think I know where we are. Let's climb up there.
And I think we're now on top of that uh, fire escape that we used to break in at the lower level. Yep. Which reminds me that we haven't broken into the storage locker yet that has all the evidence from the from Megan's case. Over here. So, let's look at our inventory. It's getting full-ish. So, yeah, let's break into here. And then I'll find... Jensen, I have a message for you from one of your former colleagues, a Detective Alexander. Jenny, what did she want? She said she could use some help if you could make your way over to Grand River Road. And might I just add, as wonderful as it is to have you back at the office, I am not your personal dating service. So, the Jenny Alexander that we heard so much about from emails now actually called us and wants to talk to us. I wonder if it, uh, if it has anything to do with that weapons cache. Well, there's nothing in here. So, well... Let's look in here. Got the code, but we don't want to use it. Okay, with this, with this. Oh no, we can go straight straight here. So, never mind. Access granted. We got an extra hundred XP. And we are in. Oh, we have three Praxis available. I like the sound of that. And we have a level three safe, so we're gonna have to upgrade anyway. But we'll probably also be reasonably close to, well, we'll need another 5,000 XP, but we can hand in the the mission for Cassandra and uh, well then we can w make our way down to the morgue so yeah we've got a few things to do and we could probably get some XP in quickly so in case we need to get that um, we need to get the stealth upgrade as well the the hacking stealth and then we can still relatively soon invest in our jumpy legs. So let's start reading. Serif Industries Incident Report TA00514-008 Case number TA-00514 Incident Terrorist Attack on Serif Industries Headquarters Detroit Officer Detective Jean Sipkowski Shepkowski it looks Polish to me. I don't know if anybody knows how to pronounce that correctly. Please let me know. I'd be curious. I'm gonna go with Shepkowski. DPD 4211. Subject 008. Confused witness. Details. Apart from Seraph's chief of security, who is still in uh, critical condition in edit, that would be us. And another lab technician who is lying in a deep coma in the same hospital. The only witness to the attack on Serif who was left alive is a tech named Arthur Hopkins. Something peculiar regarding the witness deposition or lack thereof. When we first got in on the scene, Mr. Hopkins was waiting for us in a rec room near the labs. He was obviously in shock but was quite coherent and ready to give a clear description of the incident. The emergency response team wanted to make sure his condition was stable before allowing us to interview him. When we came back after his checkup a few minutes later, he was incoherent and confused. He couldn't remember anything about the attack. We still haven't heard back from the ER 
team regarding this matter. Addendum, Captain Penn. The situation has been resolved with the medical team. Mr. Hopkins' condition has been validated. He suffered from a severe concussion. The matter is closed. So it seems more like he was drugged and then the whole thing was uh, buried. Serif Industries in Incident Report TA00514-023 Incident ter ter Terrorist Attack on Serif Industries Headquarters Detroit Officer Detective Christopher Chase DPD-3837 Subject 023 Attackers are definitely professionals. Details. Quick rundown. There was no trace evidence found at what seems to be the point of entry. The incident didn't last long, but the amount of damage was excessive. There were a large number of victims, and yet not many rounds were fired, and the accuracy was spot on. The attackers were probably all marksmen. This was the work of top-notch professionals. Serif confirms that a new augmentation design was being tested just prior to the attack, but that the augmentation itself was unharmed and no files related to it were stolen. The obvious motive here is theft and or corporate espionage. But why then destroy the facility and murder everyone? A competitor could no doubt benefit from such a catastrophe. But those measures were quite extreme to my knowledge. This is an incident without precedent. I want to note here that I've brought this matter up to Lieutenant Ashbrook on multiple occasions with no concrete results. Well, also if he says that uh, the technology was unharmed and no files related to it were stolen, then it doesn't seem like corporate espionage, because otherwise that's the first thing you want to take. I mean, if you're going to go through all the trouble of shooting up the place and killing everybody, you at least want to get some info out of it. Autopsy report, Megan Reed, DMPD case TA-00514, case TA-00514, autopsy number 89D-124, ID-168-5972, name Reed Megan, age 32, sex female, blood type O positive, uh, Path MD Lorne. Preliminary note, I have been appointed by the state to perform autopsies on the remains of multiple victims of the attack on Seraph Industries. This is due to the critical no nature of the incident and the need of the State Department to be fully aware of every detail without going through the, an endless array of bureaucratic forms and requests. This is in no way linked to the competence of local ME Dr. Gerald Campbell, and shouldn't be in interpreted as such. Final diagnosis. Uh, one vertebral injuries. Vertebrae in the neck area are displaced. Abrasion of the bones consistent with severe and sudden stress or pressure. Ligature strangulation. Abrasions found in the neck area. B. Hard to clarify. Clearly verified due to severe burns. Throat seems crushed. 3. Severe burns. A. Extremely severe burns covering the entire entirety of the body. B. Accelerant residue has been sent to chem lab for analysis. C. Absence of fumes residue and ash in the lungs indicate burns are post-mortem. 4. Toxicology report. A. Blood ethanol. None detected. B. Blood drug screen. No drugs detected. Clinical pathologic correlation. Case of death is quick and intense snapping of the neck vertebrae combined with crushing pressure. Body was likely burned after the subject was deceased. So she was strangled or her neck was broken and then she was burnt probably to hide the evidence. So let's see. Serif Industries in this incident report. So incident terrorist attack on Serif Industries headquarters, Detroit officer, Detective Jean Shepkovitz, Shepkowski. TPD 4211, subject 012, probable use of unidentified high-tech compound. Details. While examining the crime scene, uh, Detective Hayward and I both noticed that the area covered by the attack seemed abnormally damaged, burnt to degree that could not be explained by normal fire or the use of any known explosive. It was the same for all the re recovered victims' bodies. Residue analyzed by forensic lab officers 
on the scene likely comes from a high-tech accelerant of unknown nature. It seems the lab equi lab's equipment and victims were deliberately burned to an excessive degree. The most obvious conclusion is that this was done to eliminate all possible trace evidence, but it just feels odd, like something is off. Indeed. So, I guess we're at a juncture now. Oh, we actually do have the code, but we don't want the code. Because we want to hack. So, let's invest in hacking level 3. Let's take a look at this and then we'll see whether it's a good idea to get stealth or not. Alright, so we got 2, 2, 1... Spam over there. Ah, 60% chance. We might get lucky. Yes. So we want this. The oh, no, we can go straight for this. So never mind. None of that is necessary. Come on, come on. All right, and we got a 250 credits. Nice. So we got another ebook and a bracelet. Megan Reed, lab notes, entry 708. It's hard to fathom at all sometimes. When I made that breakthrough in my research a couple of years ago, I never thought it would get this big. I thought it was an anomaly at first, but it's become to genetics what universal assemblers are to nanotechnology. We're talking about the holy grail of DNA here. Hell. This is George Bendel big. Thing is, I have to bury the truth. Not the discovery, but how I reached my results. It's become harder lately. I betrayed someone. Someone I respected for the sake of my research. I wish I had a chance to fix it, but it got bigger than me. Bigger than Seraph. If this ever came to light, Seraph Industries could be ruined. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm tired. I think I'll just wrap things up for today. So that was actually, like, Megan's notes, I think. And related to a research, not to the case. Oh, we can't close this. So, yeah. So she found something that was big and could get him into deep trouble. Well, the plot thickens. But I think we're going to interrupt this video here. So for now, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like or a comment below. Uh, subscribe to stay up to date, and I will see you in the next part. So until then, have a good one.